Recently, we've built quite a few ITX custom loops on the channel, and one of the secret pieces of hardware that allows you to build a full custom water cooling loop in such a tiny case like this one is by using a smaller pump like the AlphaCool LT Solo that we've got in here. If you need something more powerful, take our dual radiator custom loop in the N-Case M1, for example, you can still use a relatively small pump solution like the SwiftTech Apogee Drive 2, as opposed to another DDC or D5 solution somewhere in the case. But today we're going to take a look at another option that you have for powering ITX custom loops, and that is AlphaCool's DC-LT pump. There are actually a few benefits of using this over the LT solo pump block that I'm using in my current rig. The main ones being that the DC LT is a lot easier to get your hands on and also that you can now use whichever CPU water block that you want. So we're going to be dropping this into my own compact machine in the T1 and let's first break down all of the parts that you'll need to know if you want to do something similar and then we'll take a look at the performance. So believe it or not, this is the pump right here, AlphaCool's DC-LT. Gaming mouse on the left for a bit of a size reference, and this should actually have no problem powering an ITX custom loop with a single radiator. Of course, you do need to fit the pump to something so that it can actually be connected to the rest of the loop, and AlphaCool make a few different housings specifically for this. This one here is the iStation Solo Top. It's a relatively compact housing for the DC-LT pump. One inlet port, one outlet, and also a fill port. All you need to do is remove the cover at the back, install the pump, and then you've got your super compact pump solution for your water-cooled ITX rig. The housing that I'm using though is a bit slimmer, it's called the iStation 40 DCLT Reservoir, but same basic idea, this one connects directly to the back, again creating this ultra compact pump solution. Also, shout out to user Fabio from smallformfactor.net. He was the first one that I saw using this pump solution, and he just so happens to be using the same case. Big props to him, his build is absolutely unreal. So with that background info out of the way, let's get this tiny little pump installed and see how it performs. So the pump installation went exactly to plan. I installed it just in front of the graphics card, which meant that I did have to remove the RGB lighting from the water block. I also had to shift the power supply back a couple of centimeters, something that I was not expecting to have to do. And I did that with the included standoffs that come within the T1 kit. And that was just to make room for the pump and the pump housing. So with the loop all hooked up with the new pump, it was time to fill the loop. And I noticed that it was so much easier to fill the loop and get all the air out of the loop with this pump compared to the CPU pump block that I was using before. Getting all of the air out of the loop was a much simpler process. And seeing as we are using a reservoir here, although it is a very small one, it does pour directly into the pump. So filling the loop itself was also a much easier process. This was always one of the harder parts on my previous water cools builds. Accessing the port on the LT Solo pump block was always an extra point of consideration and usually quite difficult. But the big question is, how is the 
noise because after all, smaller pumps are noisier than larger DDC or D5 pumps. And I'll first note that there are actually two versions of the AlphaCool DCLT pump, a low noise 2600 RPM version and a faster and much louder 3600 RPM version. Both are powered by DC and have a fairly narrow RPM range. I tested both and let's just say that you want to stay away from that faster 3600 RPM model, it is very loud. The 2600 RPM model on the other hand is virtually silent and noticeably quieter than the LT Solo pump lock for some reason. So it's safe to say that the 2600 RPM model is definitely the one to go for, and it's the one that I'll be using in my personal rig for the foreseeable future. Now, one thing to note, AlphaCool do say that the DCLT 2600 is technically the same pump that they are using in the LT Solo, which I find a bit weird because although the performance is the same as far as I've measured, the noise levels are a bit different. In the LT Solo, it is at least audible, it's by no means loud, but as I've illustrated in previous videos, you can at least hear it. This one, on the other hand, you can't hear at all. So although the pumps are the same, how they are packaged probably has a big effect on how they sound. And at least in my experience, the DCLT, when packaged in the iStation 40 uh, reservoir here is much, much quieter. Regardless, I'm confident that this will be my compact pump of choice for ITX water-cooled builds moving forward. Granted that it stays in stock. The DCLT 2600 is a much easier solution when it comes to filling and draining. It's incredibly quiet and it also also means that you can use whichever aftermarket CPU water block that you'd like for your build. That also includes mono blocks, which will also call your motherboard's VRM. Granted, you can find one for the board that you're using. The CPU water block that I ended up using on there is AlphaCool's IceBlock XPX. Overall, pretty happy with how it looks, and there doesn't seem to be any measurable difference in performance from the LT Solo that I was using previously. Same goes for GPU thermals when considering the new pump. There's no measurable difference for this build between the DC LT 2600 versus the LT Solo CPU pump lock, and that would make total sense since they are the exact same pump pump. So moving forward, this is easily my favorite compact pump solution for tiny ITX water-cooled builds. And for any single radiator sort of ITX build out there, this is definitely what I'd recommend if you don't have the space for a DDC or D5 pump. Ideally, you would be using one of those larger pumps because they don't need to spin as fast to get the sort of same level of flow rate. But I think we've clearly illustrated here that this thing is dead silent and the performance can be backed up. And for those wondering how this performs to a DDC pump, I have actually tested that previously and found no difference for a single radiator loop. The only tricky part when it comes to the DCLT is whereas with the CPU pump lock, it's pretty evident where it's gonna go in your build, you do have to do some planning with this solution. So kind of plan ahead, make sure you get the correct fittings, the extenders, and maybe a rotary fitting there as well. But given just how small it is, I don't think you're gonna have a problem fitting it into an ITX build. So I will leave some links down below in the description for those interested. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.